Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Criminals, miscreants, will always get their hands on guns. We're impacted by the gunfire that was happening around them and the subsequent stabbing and destruction of evidence. Getting assault weapons, AR-15s, um, out of the hands of, of people who shouldn't have them. But Madam Speaker, guns have been prevalent in the United States of America since before our founding. If you were serious, you would acknowledge that 96% of mass public shootings happen in an area where guns are banned. Effort to outlaw arm silencers. U.S. Senator Bob Menendez, a founding member of the Senate Armed Crime Prevention Caucus, and Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman, reintroduced the Help Empower Americans to Respond or Hear Act. Bike Amaral federal armed safety legislation to ban the importation, sale, manufacturing, transfer, and possession of armed silencers or suppressors. Armed silencers are devices designed for a very specific purpose, to suppress the sound of gunfire from unsuspecting victims and reduce the chances they can run, hide, take cover, and call the police during an active shooter situation, said Senator Menendez. It is well past time that we pass the HERE Act legislation that would prevent armed assailants from using deadly devices that only make incidents of armed crime all the more dangerous. So An escalation in violence perpetrated with guns, particularly among our young people, in a manner that I have never seen before. That you said that all assault weapons should be banned. Is that a, is that a fair statement? Violencers are not tools of self-defense. They are tools of slaying. They have no legal application, which is why law enforcement officials around the country have called for their elimination, said Rep. Watson Coleman. The HERE Act will save lives and is part of the common sense approach to firearms legislation that has widespread support among voters on both sides of the aisle. Senator Menendez first introduced the HERE Act in 2019 following the deadly Virginia Beach mass slaying, in which a gunman attached a suppressor to a 45 caliber handgun before opening fire in a local government office building where he slayed 12 people and injured four more. In addition to prohibiting armed silencers, the HERE Act would authorize a buyback program for silencers using burn JAG grants, provide individuals with a 90-day grace period after the date of enactment for individuals to comply with the ban, provide limited exceptions for certain current and former law enforcement personnel for certain atomic energy personnel and purpose and for certain authorized testing or experimentation. If you were serious, you would acknowledge that 96% of mass public shootings happen in an area where guns are banned. If you are committing a crime in Bernalillo County and we catch you, we're going to force you to get treatment through the criminal justice system. In the Senate, the HERE Act is co-sponsored by Senators Dianne Feinstein, Ed Markey, Richard Blumenthal, Tim Kaine, Alex Padilla, Maisie Hirono, Cory Booker, and Sheldon Whitehouse. In the House of Representatives by Reps Jasmine Crockett, Rashida Tlaib, Eleanor Holmes Norton, Wiley Nickel, Glenn Ivey, Barbara Lee, and Adriano Espaillat, Crime Policy Center, New Town Alliance Action, March for Our Lives, and Every Town support the bill. The Crime Policy Center applauds the introduction of the HERE Act to ban silencers. Silencers are military-bred accessories that make it easier for criminals to take innocent lives and threaten law enforcement said Kristen Rand, state's government affairs director. Manufacturers brag that silencers can make arms whisper quiet while increasing shooters' accuracy and ability to fire rounds more quickly. These characteristics only make silencers more attractive to mass shooters and terrorists. The Crime Policy Center documented the dangers of silencers in our 2019 study, Silencers, a Threat to Public Safety. Annual arm deaths have dramatically increased from 33,000 to 49,000 in the United States since 20 children and six educators were shot and slayed by a 20-year-old with an AR-15 in Sandy Hook Elementary School, said Poe Murray, chairwoman of Newtown Action Alliance. Silencers are dangerous weapons that make it easier for criminals to slay innocent Americans and more difficult for our police officers to protect our children and families. It's time for Congress to pass this life-saving legislation. Most significant federal gun restrictions in decades on Friday following years of false starts and failures to tighten gun laws. Our Second Amendment. It's a hell no to government trampling on our freedoms. Common sense regulations on firearm silencers and mufflers is a simple, straightforward step in encouraging responsible arm ownership, said Elena Perez, 
senior policy associate at March for Our Lives. These devices drastically reduce the noise of shots fired, making it challenging to identify where the gunfire is coming from, a potentially fatal mistake in mass slayings. With armed crime increasing in severity across the country, why make already deadly weapons even deadlier? An arm silencer, which is also known as a suppressor, is attached to the barrel of a firearm in order to limit the sound, muzzle flash, and kickback of an arm. Silencers pose a great danger to law enforcement officers and the public since they make it more difficult to detect the location of an active shooter. They diminish the effectiveness of gunshot detection technology deployed in many municipalities that rely on audio sensors to record the sound, time, and location of loud noises. Arm silencers have been used in armed crime-related incidents over the last decade. 1. In Monterey Park, California, on January 21, 2023, an armed assailant with a semi-auto weapon modified with a homemade suppressor slayed 11 people and injured 9 others. 2. In Virginia Beach, Virginia, on May 31, 2019, a gunman armed with a 45 caliber handgun fitted with a suppressor Days. As police investigated, they wondered why nearby residents were not reporting the shots. It turned out that in an effort to conceal his slayings, the shooter was using a silencer, which distorts the sound of gunfire and masks the muzzle flash of an arm. But Madam Speaker, guns have been prevalent in the United States of America since before our founding. Criminals will always find guns. Absolutely. And it is the cities with the most restrictive gun policies in the country where... Five. In Toledo, Ohio, in January 2011, a man fatally shot his co-worker as he sat eating his breakfast in his office. No one at the office heard the arm shot, and the victim's co-workers originally assumed he had died of a heart attack. Police later surmised that the slayer had used a silencer. Arm silencers are among the fastest-growing segments of the arm industry. While several states, including New Jersey, outlaw arm silencers, these devices are currently permitted under federal law, but must be registered. According to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, there are currently over 900,000 silencers registered under the National Firearms Act. A nationwide ban on silencers would ensure the devices are not trafficked in the states where bans are in place. Senator Menendez and Rep. Watson Coleman are longtime champions for armed crime prevention and have led multiple efforts that would help address the epidemic of armed crime affecting the nation. This year, Senator Menendez led Senate colleagues in the reintroduction of the Keep American Safe Act, which would ban the importation, sale, manufacturing, transfer, or possession of high-capacity mags. He also reintroduced the Armed Records Restoration and Preservation Act, which would require the ATF and the Federal Bureau of Investigation to collect, preserve, and disclose arm records and arm tracing data. He also joined several of his colleagues this year in reintroducing legislation to ban attack weapons, close the Charleston loophole, and require arm owners secure their firearms in a secure arm storage. Getting assault weapons, AR-15s, um, out of the hands of, of people who shouldn't have them. Were impacted by the gunfire that was happening around them and the subsequent stabbing and destruction of evidence. Senator Menendez and Rep. Coleman have also supported previous efforts to ban attack weapons and pass universal background checks. Senator Menendez voted for the original attack weapons ban in 1994 as a member of the House of Representatives. Arm Laws in Lower Courts A landmark U.S. Supreme Court decision on the Second Amendment is appending arm laws across the country, dividing judges and sowing confusion over what firearm restrictions can remain on the books. The High Court's ruling that set new standards for evaluating arm laws left open many questions, experts say, resulting in an increasing number of conflicting decisions as lower court judges struggled to figure out how to apply it. 
The Supreme Court's so-called Bruin decision changed the test that lower courts had long used for evaluating challenges to firearm restrictions. Judges should no longer consider whether the law serves public interests like enhancing public safety, the justices said. Under the Supreme Court's new test, the government that wants to uphold an arm restriction must look back into history to show it is consistent with the country's historical tradition of firearm regulation. Courts in recent months have declared unconstitutional federal laws designed to keep arms out of the hands of domestic abusers, felony defendants, and people who use marijuana. Judges have shot down a federal ban on possessing arms with serial numbers removed and arm restrictions for young adults in Texas and have blocked the enforcement of Delaware's ban on the possession of homemade ghost arms. In several instances, judges looking at the same laws have come down on opposite sides on whether they are constitutional in the wake of the conservative Supreme Court majority's ruling. The legal turmoil caused by the first major arm ruling in a decade will likely force the Supreme Court to step in again soon to provide more guidance for judges. There is confusion and disarray in the lower courts because not only are they not reaching the same conclusions, they're just applying different methods of applying Bruin's method differently, said Jacob Charles, a professor at Pepperdine University's law school who focuses on firearms law. What it means is that not only are new laws being struck down, but also laws that have been on the books for over 60 years, 40 years in some cases, those are being struck down, whereas prior to Bruin, courts were unanimous that those were constitutional, he said. Second Amendment protects firearms in common use at the time and also said this, quote, for lawful purposes like self-defense. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Criminals, miscreants, will always get their hands on guns. The legal wrangling is playing out as mass slayings continue to plague the country awash in arms and as law enforcement officials across the U.S. work to combat an uptick in violent crime. This week, six people were fatally shot at multiple locations in a small town in rural Mississippi, and a gunman slayed three students and critically wounded five others at Michigan State University before slaying himself. Dozens of people have passed away in mass slaying so far in 2023, including in California, where 11 people were slayed as they welcomed the Lunar New Year at a dance hall popular with older Asian Americans. The New Orleans-based Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals acknowledged that the law embodies salutary policy goals meant to protect vulnerable people in our society. But the judges concluded that the government failed to point to a precursor from early American history that is comparable enough to modern law. Since the decision, for example, judges have consistently upheld the federal ban on convicted felons from possessing arms. The Supreme Court noted that cases dealing with unprecedented societal concerns or dramatic technological changes may require a more nuanced approach, and the justices clearly emphasized that the right to bear arms is limited to law-abiding citizens, said Shira Feldman, litigation counsel for Brady, the arm control group. The Supreme Court's test has raised questions about whether judges are suited to be poring over history and whether it makes sense to judge modern laws based on regulations, or a lack thereof, from the past. As suppressors, illegal nationwide, just as they are in New Jersey. Shall not be infringed unless Democrats say this weapon looks so scary we have to get rid of it. We are not experts in that white, wealthy, and male property owners thought about firearms regulation in 1791. Yet we are now expected to play historian in the name of constitutional adjudication, wrote Mississippi U.S. District Judge Carlton Reeves, who was appointed by Vice President Barack Obama. Some judges are really parsing the history very closely and saying these laws aren't analogous because the historical law worked in a slightly different fashion than the modern law, said Andrew Willinger, executive director of the Duke Center for Firearms Law. Others, he said, have done a much more flexible inquiry and are trying to say, look, what is the purpose of this historical law as best I can understand it? Firearm rights and arm control groups are closely watching many pending cases, including several challenging state laws banning certain semi-auto weapons and high-capacity mags. A federal judge in Chicago on Friday denied a bid to block an Illinois law that bans the sale of so-called attack weapons and high-capacity mags, finding the law to be constitutional under the Supreme Court's new test. A state court, however, already has partially blocked the law, 
allowing some armed dealers to continue selling the weapons amid a separate legal challenge. Already, some arm laws passed in the wake of the Supreme Court decision have been shot down. A judge declared multiple portions of New York's new arm law unconstitutional, including rules that restrict carrying firearms in public parks and places of worship. An appeals court later put that ruling on hold while it considered the case, and the Supreme Court has allowed New York to enforce the law for now. Some judges have upheld a law banning people under indictment for felons from buying arms, while others have declared it unconstitutional. The state house still has to vote on the bill. Nine Inch Sides' Craig Smith looked into how much difference a suppressor makes. The ban had remained in effect. 70% of the families torn apart by these massacres would still have their loved ones today. A federal judge issued an order barring Delaware from enforcing provisions of a new law outlawing the manufacture and possession of so-called ghost arms that don't have serial numbers and can be nearly impossible for law enforcement officials to trace. But another judge rejected a challenge to California's ghost arm regulations. In the California case, U.S. District Judge George Wu, who was nominated by President George W. Bush, appeared to take a dig at how other judges are interpreting the Supreme Court's guidance. The company that brought the challenge, and apparently certain other courts, would like to treat the Supreme Court's decision as a word salad, choosing an ingredient from one side of the plate and an entirely separate ingredient from the other, until there is nothing left whatsoever other than an entirely bulletproof and unrestrained Second Amendment, Wu wrote in his ruling. Deregulation of Suppressors State by State a law has been passed in Mississippi that was heavily influenced by the Texas Suppressor Freedom lawsuit and ongoing efforts in Texas Fifth Circuit to get rid of Maiden's NFA and ATS rules. This law, HB 912, works with the Texas Suppressor Freedom case to start a movement in each state to loosen restrictions on suppressors that are only made and kept in those states. Gun enthusiasts hope lawmakers will pull the trigger and lift the ban on silencers. 10 million felons in the United States because they bought a product that the ATF authorized. The Mississippi law wants to make sure that armed silencers made and kept in the state are not affected by federal laws and rules that cover those kinds of devices. In addition, it stops people from state and local governments from following federal laws on suppressors made in Mississippi. The main goal of the Mississippi law was the same as the main goal of Texas's Suppressor Freedom Bill. However, it won't be put into action until the Texas Suppressor Freedom lawsuit, especially Paxton v. D, is over. A part of the new law says that any Mississippi government agency that makes a rule or policy that helps enforce federal suppressor laws will not get state funds. And even though the Mississippi law has passed and signed, it says that it won't go into force until the Texas lawsuit mentioned in the law is over. This lawsuit from Texas comes from House Bill 957, which was passed in 2021 and aims to exempt all suppressors made and kept in Texas from federal control. The argument is about Texas and a few individuals who are fighting the ATF because they were mistreated by other people in the state. Word that Sheriff Hart has also, is also against the new bill that was passed on Tuesday. Mass shootings have increased exponentially in our public spaces, schools, movie theaters. The case went to the Northern District of Texas Federal District Court. There, a judge decided in favor of the government and the ATF after hearing both sides' motions for summary judgment. The district court judge focused on the disputed part of standing by saying that the respondents had not actually been hurt, which meant that they did not have standing. The court agreed with this reasoning and so found in favor of the government. Standing in Court and Challenges In the Texas case, the judge said that the plaintiffs were right to point out that the government has a history of going after people who illegally hold silencers that aren't registered. The judge did stress, though, that these claimants did not show proof that they had any illegal silencers or were acting in a way that was illegal. Also, the plaintiffs didn't show that they were really in danger of being prosecuted and the judge said that criminal law principles say people can't be found guilty based only on their thoughts, wishes, or motives. So the judge thought that the plaintiffs' fear of being prosecuted was made up or speculative and didn't have the solid base needed for Article III standing. The court also said that claimants might be able to show they had standing by showing direct threats from the ATF 
or by trying to register one of these suppressors made in Texas with the ATF. The judge said that intent alone wasn't enough. How much louder is it without the silencer? It's about six times louder without the silencer. It's consistent with the historical tradition of the nation's regulation of firearms. There had to be proof of real illegal behavior before the person could sue the ATF. In the Texas case that Mississippi used as an example, the lower court judge said that Texas did not have the right to sue the ATF because it could not defend its own citizens in such a case. So, the judge agreed to the government's move for summary judgment and threw out the whole case. After that, Texas filed an appeal and asked the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals to look into the case again and reject the lower court's decision about standing. There were oral arguments in Texas because the case was so important to the Constitution. This made people wonder if Texans can challenge the law before getting permission and paying the tax, and if Texas can immediately protect its quasi-sovereign interests in the health and safety of its citizens. Notably, some people have said they don't care about this Texas suppressor freedom case, claiming that it may not seem important to them. Texas suppressor freedom case There are people who think that the Texas suppressor freedom case only affects Texas, but this is not true. At the moment, the case is being looked at by the pro-Second Amendment First Circuit Court of Appeals. The rulings made by the First Circuit and lower courts have affected many people across the country. The First Circuit covers more than just Texas, which is very important to keep in mind. Also, states like Mississippi are actively using the Texas law and case to try to deregulate suppressors in the same way on a state-by-state -state level. This case is likely to end up before the Supreme Court or at least be asked to be looked at by the Supreme Court. Mufflers on our vehicles is because they're incredibly loud. That, that output is incredibly loud. The muffler helps dampen that noise. The suppressor is the same way. The American people want their constitutional rights protected and their kids to be safe in school. Any ruling made by the First Circuit or the Supreme Court will probably affect a lot of Second Amendment cases. It may also lead other states, maybe even yours, to pass laws like the ones in Texas and Mississippi which will make it easier for states to stop regulating suppressors. In Mississippi, HB 912 says that the law will only be implemented after the U.S. Supreme Court rules in favor of the Texas Attorney General and the state of Texas in the case of Texas House Bill 957 approval and implementation. The case that was talked about is Paxton v. D. This shows how important the Texas Suppressor Freedom case is for the possibility of state-by-state -state reform. Even with these changes, it's important to remember that the ATF still sees suppressors as regulated things that must follow the rules of the National Firearms Act and the Armed Control Act. If someone does this without properly filling a Form 1 and following the right steps, the ATF will continue to go after them. On Tuesday, a new bill was signed into law that outlaws the sale and manufacturing of semi-automatic assault weapons. Take away your constitutional rights under the Second Amendment. Well, we just heard that that's exactly what the Democrats want to do here today. It's important for people in Mississippi to know that HB 912, the state law, won't go into effect until the Paxton case is over. Because of this, people still need to be careful and follow the rules that are already in place. People who support the Second Amendment hope that the Fifth Circuit will give them another victory. This could lead to a review by the Supreme Court, which would change the law even more in these situations. Legal and Firearm Developments In Dublin, a California appeals court recently ruled that the state can continue sharing arm owners' personal information with researchers. Shortly after Governor Nome signed the law allowing this information sharing, the Attorney General's office inadvertently released spreadsheets containing the personal details of almost everyone who applied for a concealed carry permit. The leak, although not entirely complete, raises suspicions of intentional actions. The U.S. decided to withhold 4,500 M16 rifles from Israel due to concerns about a politician distributing them to civilians at political events. Interestingly, it was not the fact that civilian militias were receiving the rifles that troubled him. State lawmakers are considering several changes to gun laws, including making these much easier to get. The suppressor will reduce the muzzle flash so that they couldn't ignite those gases. But the politicization of the events. The State Department had previously warned against using the distribution for political gain. This ruling, effective from December 8th, is permanent. 
Conversely, in Maryland, a federal appeals court struck down the handgun purchase permit, but state police intend to maintain the existing process, requiring fingerprints, safety training, and a waiting period for handgun purchases. Regarding the interpretation of the term infringe in the Second Amendment, a federal judge clarified that it historically meant to temporarily impede, not entirely eliminate a right. Maryland is likely to appeal, but relief for residents may be delayed. The discussion also touches on the semi-auto setting of firearms, the power they generate, and the challenges faced by arm rights advocates. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.